Good morning, SAUS first and second graders. Back to you with another cool chess video. Okay, so today and recently in class, we've kind of been discussing um, the value of the chess pieces and I kind of want to review that now. So let's talk about our pawns. Remember our pawns are worth one point on the chessboard. They are our lowest value piece, but this is the piece with the highest potential. Of course, if you can reach the other side of the chessboard, you can become a knight or a bishop or a rook or a queen. You can't remain a pawn and you also can't turn yourself into a king. Only one king per color on the chessboard. So the pawn is worth one point. But then we have our minor pieces. Our minor pieces are our knights and our bishops. Okay, so the knight is worth three points, alrighty. Um, and our bishops are also worth three points. I like to call these pieces twins, right? Uh, they were born at the same time and that's why they are worth the same amount of piece value, right? So if you know anybody that's a twin, we have a twin at home. Knights and bishops are worth the same, three points each. Then we're gonna go into our major pieces, right? Because these pieces are a little bit stronger um, than the pawn and the knight and the bishop. And these are our rooks. Remember the rook is worth five whole points. Okay, a little bit stronger than the knight and bishop. And then our queen is worth nine points. The queen is so strong, it's going to take me one whole rank plus another rank to show you that the queen is worth nine points. The almighty queen, so powerful. Now we're gonna move on to our king. The king is worth the entire game. You cannot capture the king, so he has no point value. You must checkmate the king, right? Remember, the king never leaves the board. We can only put the king in check, which means in danger, or in checkmate, which means in danger, but he cannot do capture, protect, or run away, okay? So that king is priceless. The queen is the most powerful piece on the board um, because she has so much range and can do so many things, right? But the king is the most important piece, right? Because without him um, and without his safety, then we lose the game, all righty? So I, want, I bring that up so we can talk today about profitable exchanges, okay? We wanna make captures that gains us more points than we lose, all righty? We wanna make sure that the value is always more than zero. Now, if the value is zero, which means I'm gonna capture a piece that's worth three points and you're gonna capture a piece back of mine that's worth three points, that means I gained three points, but then I lost three points. And if it's zero, that's called a fair trade. That's perfectly fine in chess. If every piece on the chess board did a fair trade, only the kings would remain and that would be a draw, right? And that means it's a tied game. So that's totally fine. What we don't want is to give away more points then we would gain. So what I want to do now, okay, is look for the white pieces and find a capture. Yeah, right now there's only one capture on the board. And right now it's my pawn. Remember the pawn moves forward, but they capture other pieces on diagonals, all righty? If I capture this knight on the square F6, how many points would I gain? Yeah, I would win three points, right? Because the knight is worth three. So I'm gonna win three. And sometimes once we take this, the ability, the other side has the ability to capture back. So when this pawn captures my white pawn back, I have three because I captured the knight, but I'm gonna lose one point because my white pawn was captured by the black pawn. So in total, did I get more than zero? Yeah, I gained two points and I have more than zero. So this is a great capture for me to make. I'm gonna get three. And in this example, they didn't capture. So I'm gonna remain with three, but capturing is probably best. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, right now we have two pieces that can possibly capture here. Okay, we have two pieces that can possibly capture. All righty. Um, so right now this pawn on E5 can capture the rook on D6, or we can capture the knight on F6. So I want you to think, which capture is going to get you or gain you the most points? Which piece is more valuable? Yeah, so if we capture this knight here in F6, we're gonna win three points. But when the rook captures our pawn back or the pawn captures our pawn back, we're gonna lose one point, right? So it's kind of like the previous, previous example. We're gonna lose one point and we're gonna have a total of two. So when I capture, it's gonna tell me to retry because the board tells me there's a higher value capture that we can make right now. Yeah, you got it. So this pawn can capture right here on D6 and we're gonna gain five whole points. But keep in mind that the black pawn can recapture. And when the black pawn recaptures, 
they're going to take our one point pawn off the board. So we gain a total of four points. And is four more than zero? Is four a greater number than zero? Yeah, I agree. I think four is greater than zero. So that means this is a great capture. We're going to go ahead and capture here and lose our one point pawn. But it's okay if they capture our one point pawn because we have four points in total. Let's try another one. This one's a little bit different, this example, because you want to kind of consider every capture that every single piece on the chessboard can make. So right here in the corner, it tells you it's black to move. All righty. And what we can do is capture here. And we can capture here. Let's talk about the rook on F8 first. If the rook on F8 captures this bishop on F3, how many points will we gain? Yeah, I agree. We'll gain three points for that capture. However, when the pawn recaptures or the rook recaptures, we have three, but we're going to lose five. That means it's below the number zero, which means I'm giving away points at this point. Right now, I had three, and I have to give you five. So I'm going to give you one, two, three, and then I have to give you two more points that I don't even have. That means I'm giving you more points than I want, right? So that's not a good capture. So we're gonna win three and we're gonna lose five. So this is why we have to retry. Now let's use our knight, right? One, two, turn, and we capture how many points by capturing this rook? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna capture five points for capturing this rook. And then when the pawn recaptures, we're only going to lose the three point knight after we recapture. So we gain five, and we only had to give away three for that 3.9 night. How many do we have left over? Yeah, we have two left over and it's two greater than zero. Yeah, I agree. Two is greater than zero. So that looks like a profitable exchange or a great capture to me. Let's try one more. Right now, you have to consider that there's only one capture on the chessboard. So if you're looking at all the ways your pieces move, you will quickly find that none of my pieces can really capture anything right now. My king moves one square at a time, this bishop diagonal, and then you realize, whoops, this bishop can go on the long diagonal and capture this black rook. If my bishop captures the black rook, how many points will I capture from black? Yeah, I'm gonna capture five points. However, this rook over here on F8 can capture my bishop back and I'm going to lose three points. And when I lose those three points, I have two left over, right? Two left over. So if my two is more than zero, it's a great capture every single time. Last example of today. Right now, I wanna consider all my captures, even the silly looking captures, right? So the easy captures to spot here is the queen can capture the knight, the rook can capture the queen, and then there's some tricky ones we may not see, okay? The bishop can capture the pawn here on F7, and my queen can capture the pawn here on B7. So let's explore all of these answers. If my queen captures here on B7, how many points would I win? Yeah, I'm taking the itty bitty pawn. I'm just gonna win one point, right? I'm gonna win one point for that itty bitty pawn. But the queen can recapture. So that's one point. And then I have to give away nine points that I do not have. I can give you the first point, but then I'm gonna have to give you eight more points I do not have. So that's gonna give me less than zero. Do I wanna give away points? Do I wanna owe my opponent more points? No, absolutely not. So this is not a good capture. And it's gonna tell me to retry because I don't wanna give away my all important and powerful queen. Let's take a look at if the queen captures here on F6. I'm going to win three points because I captured the knight, but I'm going to lose nine when the pawn recaptures. So again, I have three because I won the knight, but then I have to give you three back plus six more to equal the nine point queen, right? I'm going to give you nine points that I just don't have. I don't have that. So I don't think that's a great capture. I don't want to owe my opponent points. Let's take a look at bishop takes F7. If the bishop takes on F7, yes, we gain one point, but the rook, the queen, or the king can capture back and we're gonna lose three. Again, another situation where I'm gonna owe you two points. I don't wanna owe my opponent any points. So the last and best example here is for this nice five point rook to take this nice nine point queen. 
when I get the queen, I'm going to get nine points. But when the knight recaptures the rook, I'm only have to give away five. So I'm going to give those five away. And then I won four total points. So when I have more than zero, it's always a great, great capture. We take and we win those points. Remember friends, when you're playing with your parents, your siblings, your cousins, your family, your friends, or even a stranger in the park, right? You wanna make sure that you are capturing the most pieces possible. You wanna make sure every time you capture, you get more points than you lose, all right? I'll link this uh, study in the description. So if you and your family wants to try the rest out, you are more than welcome to.